In this review, I'll be telling you about Bravely Default 2's amazing combat system, its not-so-great story, whether you need to have played the other games in the series, and if this is the best JRPG on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, and if you love JRPG content like lists and reviews, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Ah, our young seafarer has awoken at last. The story in Bravely Default 2 is about as generic as it gets, but I think that was done purposefully as the development team wanted to retain that classic JRPG feel. You begin the game washed up on a shore with no memories and are aided by a young girl and an old man. After a few encounters that I won't spoil, you're eventually joined by two other travelers, Elvis and Adele. The two are traveling the world in search of asterisks. These are powerful stones that grant the wielder unique abilities. From a gameplay perspective, they grant you new jobs, which I'll touch on a little later. The young girl that rescued you, Gloria, is on the hunt for four elemental crystals which have been scattered across the world. The four decide to travel together as they'll be able to help each other out on their respective quests. And for those that are wondering, no, you don't need to have played the other two games in the series. This is a brand new story and set of characters that you can start fresh with. As I said in the opening, the story is just okay and probably won't be your main driving force to finish the game. If you've played an RPG before, you've seen this story. You and your companions are collecting MacGuffins and trying to stop an evil bad guy from taking over the world. Pretty standard stuff. While the individual characters can be interesting at times and the game does make a solid effort to give them compelling backstories, the way story segments are presented feels… flat. About 95% of the story moments are in this almost visual novel style presentation where characters are just standing and talking to each other. What contributes to this flat feeling are rare story moments with cinematic camera shots using in-game environments. While I understand doing this for every story segment would have taken up a ton of resources, I would have liked to have seen this presentation style a little more often. This presentation style being in the game at all gave me this feeling of what could have been. It's a shame because Bravely Default 2 does have some pretty outstanding voice performances. They do a great job of fleshing out the characters and giving weight to a number of surprisingly heavy moments. One way Bravely Default 2 tries to flesh out its core cast is through Party Chat. These are basically skits like you would find in a Tales game that provide supplementary dialogue. Personally, I hate these. They just feel lazy. If you want to give some extra depth to your characters, do it properly through in-game cutscenes or heck, even in the visual novel style. Overall, this is far from the worst story I've seen in a JRPG, but Bravely Default 2 showed so many flashes of potential that it ends up feeling like a bit of a wasted opportunity. Wow. Tough crowd. The gameplay, in particular the combat and job system, is where Bravely Default 2 truly shines. It implements a turn-based combat system with a party of four, with other characters occasionally joining the party during certain story sections. Its signature Brave and Default system that the series is named after makes a return. Essentially during a character's turn you have the option to defend, or default, and store up a turn to use for later. You could also activate Brave, granting that character up to three additional actions that turn. Finding the proper balance of when or if to use these abilities will be the key to battle. Of course, for random trash enemies, you can brave three times for each character and win with ease. But for boss fights or higher level enemies, you'll have to be more thoughtful. For example, you don't want your healer to overuse their brave ability and not be able to act when they're really needed. On the flip side, it's important to know when you have good windows for your damage dealers to go all out. I've heard from quite a few people that Bravely Default 2's bosses can be quite hard, and I tend to agree with an asterisk. Yes, the bosses can be challenging, however, I feel like one of the most rewarding aspects of Bravely Default 2 is coming up with a strategy to beat them. Maybe they give you a certain status effect, need to be debuffed, or just hit hard. Whatever the case may be, I always enjoyed coming up with a strategy. I think your frustration level with bosses will vary depending on your expectations, so if you go in knowing they'll be tough, I feel like it won't be as frustrating of an experience for you. That being said, the normal difficulty really does feel more like hard, while easy feels more like normal. I personally played on normal, but I wouldn't blame anyone for playing on easy. I also have to say that I can't remember the last time I had this much fun grinding. Normally I hate grinding in JRPGs and feel like it's just bad design, but I didn't feel that way with Bravely Default 2. Admittedly, I think part of it was because you can control the speed of battles and make them go by super fast. I think the other part was because I was always chasing a new ability for a job. Now seems like as good of a time as any to talk about Bravely Default 2's brilliant job system. Essentially, you can equip a main job and a sub job. Your equipped main job will reflect in your appearance and will also be able to earn job points, granting you new abilities each time you level up a job. Your equipped sub job will allow you to use that job's abilities, but you won't be able to earn experience for that job. Each job also has a certain number of passive abilities you can equip, regardless of what job you're using. Each of these abilities is assigned a point value, and each character has a pool of 5 points to spend on these passive abilities. The majority only cost 1, but some, like JP Up and Up, cost 2. The real fun of this system is finding abilities that combo well together. For example, my two casters regain MP every turn and have their cost of spells reduced. 
My main damage dealer, Adele, is able to one-shot most random enemies without taking the Brave Point penalty that's normally required for a powerful attack of hers. You'll regularly collect new jobs, so there's a constant feeling of discovery and thinking about how you can make your current abilities combo even better together. I will admit that at a certain point during Chapter 3, I started getting job fatigue. I was getting new jobs, but they weren't really that fun to use, nor did they have any cool passive abilities that worked with my current setup. However, near the end of Chapter 3 and the beginning of Chapter 4, I started getting a lot of super cool jobs with neat abilities. There are 24 jobs in total, including two you need to complete side quests to obtain, so there should be a good handful that you could have some fun with. One piece of advice that I will give you though is to master the Freelancer class as soon as you possibly can. This will unlock two passive abilities that greatly increase the amount of job points you can earn in battle. Having these abilities will make it way easier to unlock the abilities of each new class you get. Or you know, don't do that and just make your life harder. Another way you can make your experience a little easier is through the ship sailing feature. Essentially you're given access to a ship that you can send off to explore. After a maximum of 12 hours you can call it back where it will recall its adventures and share the treasure it found along the way. This is super helpful as you'll almost exclusively get money or items like JP or experience orbs to make your team stronger. I really like this feature as it felt like I was improving my team even when I wasn't playing. However, you can totally ignore this feature if you want to. Bravely Default 2 also has a card mini game called B&D. It's very similar to Final Fantasy IX's Tetra Master in that you're trying to occupy more squares than your opponent once everyone's deck has been played. Cards can either take up spaces, remove opponent's cards, or activate special abilities. Winning a match earns you points, and once you've accumulated enough points, you can take opponents' cards. Continuing to win also helps you climb the ranks where you can play harder opponents. There's no real benefit of playing in terms of earning items or equipment for battle, but it's nonetheless a fun and addicting distraction worth checking out. Everyone's a winner! <laughs> Composer Revo once again delivers a masterful soundtrack in Bravely Default 2. The game starts off strong with the Hasselonia town theme. It exudes such a jolly vibe, perfect for kicking off an RPG adventure. This was probably one of, if not my absolute favorite songs in the entire game. Other town themes are equally as melodic, making liberal use of chimes throughout. Outside of the game's main theme, another standout track is the battle theme. It's so high energy with its bombastic horns and epic string section. Even when you're fighting the most mundane enemies, you'll be in the mood for a fight whether you like it or not because the music is that good. Let's talk about the art style for a minute because it's certainly been the center of a lot of debate. While I personally love the environments, something about the character models just feels… off. I don't know if it's that the characters are more realistically proportioned, or that the art style for the characters doesn't quite match the environment's more painterly feel like in the 3DS games. They don't look bad by any means, and you'll certainly get used to the look as the game goes on, but I feel like a little something got skewed when transitioning the art style from the 3DS. That guy's a real piece of work. Bravely Default 2 is a wonderful JRPG with a classic feel. The combat is deep and challenging, the job system allows for a ton of experimentation, and its music is downright magical. While I personally hold games like Octopath Traveler and Dragon Quest XI-S in higher esteem when it comes to JRPGs on the Nintendo Switch, however, Bravely Default 2 comfortably sits among the best the console has to offer. If you love classic-style JRPGs and great turn-based combat, then you should absolutely consider adding Bravely Default 2 to your collection. Now if you want to hear about other great JRPGs you should consider adding to your collection, click into this playlist right here where you can watch my reviews for games like Ease 9, Persona 5 Strikers, and tons more. And if you love JRPGs and want to stay up to date with the latest reviews and other fun videos, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.